This is the second video covering the P-47 ground attack. This one will cover rockets and ground strafing. If you didn't watch the first one, I recommend you do. This way you can learn about how to take off at a full load, as well as dive and glide bombing in the P-47. Previously, we set up the bomb sequence, as well as the rocket sequence, to fire two rockets at a time. Then we performed the dive bombing technique against the target, releasing 3,000 feet, showing a direct hit. And then we recovered, and then performed the glide bombing attack against the next target, releasing it about 500 feet. So what we'll do is we'll pick up this video where the last one left off, after the recovery from the glide bombing attack. So once we were released, we had full power, we'll continue extending away, staying nice and low, avoiding any gunfire, but performing some evasive maneuvering, keeping our flight path always changing to make it harder for the anti-aircraft to hit us. So we use our speed to get away, and then we'll get ourselves set up for a rocket attack. So to do that, the gun sight is going to be in the fixed reticule position. For altitude, we're going to climb to between 1500 to 2000 AGL. And then when we're close enough to the target, we're going to place our sight on it in a 15 to 20 degree dive. Then once you're stable, you're going to leave the target by placing it just underneath the cross. In this way, you can fire your rockets by about a thousand feet, and then you'll begin your full power recovery by 75 feet AGL. And of course, don't forget to set up your rocket sequence how you want to fire them. So over at about one o'clock or so, there's a train. What I'm going to do first is attack the locomotive to show we're attacking a single target, then we'll attack the remaining carriages. So as we feel we're coming up on a point that's going to allow us to attack perpendicular, we'll pull in towards it. So we nose over, put the cross on the target, and then we'll lead it by putting the target just underneath the cross, and since this target's moving, it also needs to be a little behind it. So we fire at a thousand feet, at full power, and begin our recovery. Now we are firing rockets, so they've got a very high velocity and they're going to close that distance very quickly. So once you fire at that thousand foot mark, it's probably a good idea to initiate your recovery almost immediately. You can use the same technique to attack stationary targets as well, like cars, artillery or tanks. Just wanted to show the train here, this way we look at how to attack the target singly, and then we'll loop back around and we're going to make an attack using the remaining rockets, firing them all off at once. So after completing the recovery, we want to fire these rockets all off at once, so ideally, you're going to be lined up to be parallel with the target this time. So we're going to continue our climb, back up to altitude. So as we come back around, we're adjusting our flight path so we'll begin at the right altitude, but also that as we make our attack along the train, it's going to be in line with the direction it's on the tracks. So as we come around and line up, we're going to add our lead, we'll fire at a thousand feet, and then we're going to pull up slightly and fire again, this way we can get all our rockets away in one pass. So in an ideal attack, you'll let loose all of your rockets in one attempt. This way, you don't have to make multiple passes. So if you find a bunch of targets lined up, you can take advantage of this technique, then you should use it. This way you can spend less time around the target area. As part of this recovery, I'm going to continue my turn back towards the south. This will be the fastest way out of the combat area. Now an extra option you have after firing these rocket tubes is you can jettison them. You do this by pressing left shift D and this will cause the tubes to come off the airplane and float down to the ground. So once the tubes come off you're going to have a clean airplane and you can focus on doing some ground strafing. To do that I recommend use the fixed reticule that way you avoid chasing the gyroscopic sight. Conversions you can use between 3 and 500 meters with an altitude beginning at 1500 feet above the ground. You'll be in a 15 to 20 degree dive, your airspeed is going to be at least 270 miles per hour. You'll be placing a target on the cross, and you'll fire the guns at about 1500 feet away. The safest way to recover is to begin once you see the ricochet is hitting the ground, but you will have time depending on your airspeed to recover later. So we have ourselves lined up on the target, then our dive, putting the cross on, fire at the right distance, get the ricochets, we'll start our recovery. And because the fire was accurate in this case, the target is destroyed. Now in this recovery, I know there's some anti-aircraft present. So we're going to continue our jinking and maneuvering down low. Making ourselves a hard target to get shot at. And now we're also back out towards the eastern side. So we've climbed back up to our strafing altitude of about 1500 feet AGL. 
And I'm going to swing back around and look for another target to shoot at. So we see the smoke plume from our first target. There's going to be a group of four rocket trucks there. Let's zoom in, we can see. I'm going to line up on the left hand side. I'm going to shoot that one as well. So we nose it over, cross on the target, start firing, cover. So in this case, didn't quite get enough rounds on the target, so the target wasn't destroyed. Still continue our recovery as usual though. Just got to watch out for some AA nearby. I think we just flew over one. So our goal is going to be next to take out that emplacement. So we're going to recover, going back up to 1500 feet. Get some distance. We're going to swing back around. And we're going to line up on that anti-aircraft emplacement and shoot at it. What you'll notice with these turns is I'm making them very lazy, so I'm not really applying much G. This allows me to keep up the airspeed. This way I know I can make an effective pass and recovery after attacking a target. So I'm lining up. And nose down towards the target. Get the cross on. We can fire and begin our recovery. So again in the recovery we're going to be staying nice and low, avoiding any fire. Then we're going to move forward in time as we set up for the next attack run. So now we've set ourselves back up at 1500 feet. We're going to be lining ourselves up so we can attack an entire row of artillery in one attempt. So similar to what we do with the rockets, we're going to line up on that first target closest to us. And as we fire, we're going to bring the nose up. We're going to hit all the other targets along the way we begin our recovery. So when we make this attack run, we may not destroy every target, but if you look closely you can see the men running away. This tells you that temporarily they're not going to be firing. So without much of an AA threat, we're going to continue climbing to the south, getting back up to 1500 feet, and this is about where the train is, so we're going to set up to attack that on a new pass. So we're in position near the train coming down, but we're offset a little bit to the left. We want a nice straight strafing run. So you want to get back along the center line of the train. That way you can fire all the way along it. We start seeing on the board strikes and we can recover at a safe altitude. So by now you have a good idea of how to do strafing against these targets. But it's also important to see how when you're not doing the technique correctly it can reduce your effectiveness overall. So here we've lined up nicely on a target. We fire destroy it and we recover as we expect. And this target's in front of us, so we're trying another attack, but this time we're at a much lower altitude, which results in a much shallower angle. Which means you can have a much smaller margin of error when it comes to shooting at the target, as well as in the recovery. Now in this example, the targets are close together, so if you fire a little bit further away and you score the hit to destroy it, you can quickly move on to another target and get some fire into that before recovering safely. So again, if you're firing at a target and you do destroy it at a long enough range, you're still going to have enough time to line up in a secondary target. So you should take advantage of it when it happens to line up on that target to destroy it. And just make sure that you don't end up approaching too shallow that it will affect your shooting and recovery. If you're focusing only on ground attack, eventually you're going to run out of the 50 cal ammunition as well. And when this happens, obviously this is becoming the last pass. So we get two more targets and then we're out of ammo. So now it's just a matter of using the airspeed we've got, having the full power set, I'm going to get out of the area as fast as possible. And once you're far enough away, you can climb back up to a decent altitude and it'll let you reorient yourself. This will let you find out where you are, then you can navigate back to the home airfield. That completes part 2 of ground attacks in the P-47, so I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let me know if it helps you out with a like button or a comment. And don't forget to be a subscriber with the notifications, that way you can know when these new videos are released.